Hi guys, so let's have a look at raw image advanced adjustment in Affinity Photo 2 on the iPad. Now this is something you may be familiar with, in which case skip right over it, that's okay. But if you're looking at how to use raw images, and most mobile phones, iPhones and Galaxies, all those, they will take raw images now. Now raw images mean you can snap away to your heart's content and do the adjustments either on your iPad out in the field or do the adjustments back at home in your studio. You don't have to spend half an hour trying to get the shot in camera, which is all very nice if you're a professional photographer, but when you've taken all those happy snaps and you get back and you think, oh, you're sitting in your motel room or hotel room, for example, and you think, gee, I wish I hadn't have um, used so much exposure in that shot. Well, with Affinity Photo, version 2 on your iPad, you can adjust it right there. So let's have a quick look at how it's done. Now let's start by looking at tonal adjusting a raw image. Now this again is a second part, if you like, from the workbook in developing raw images. And this time we're looking, looking at tonally adjusting. So this is lo the loaded image. This is our raw image that's loaded. It's the workbook raw image. If you have the workbook, well, you've been to my website and downloaded the images. It's the Tonal Adjustment Raw Image. Now, on the Basic panel, check Highlights, Shadows and Highlights. Now, we've got to scroll up to get this. So, you have to select the Basic tool. You can see in the top right-hand corner there. Now, you can see that nothing happens there, except that I did that. What you've got to do is hang on to it. That's it for a moment until that slider bar appears. And then you can move it up. Don't push it straight away or you'll modify adjustments. Now we want the highlighters slided to the left to recover some of the, um, some of the options. And I would say about minus 20 for the highlights. 17 and about about 20. Now that's all right. Now you'll watch the histogram. I'll turn the shadows and highlights off. Turn it back on and you can see the histogram changes slightly. So that's set to minus 20. Now we've got to go back up and drag the contrast slider in the enhanced section to the right to boost the image's contrast and produce some more vivid tones. You can see that's, oh God, that's very sensitive, isn't it? But it's still all zeros in there. Where's our contrast? There's our contrast. Now we'll drag that to the right to about 20. There's 20% and you can see the histogram has changed markedly and so has the image. Now just to check that, Hold that down, we're not changing anything, and you can slide. once that's a long press, then you can slide it up. You see? That's minus 20 at the bottom in highlights. Long press there. Drag it down, and the contrast is plus 20. So that's easy, and that's taken away a lot of the haze from the water that was in the middle. You can see the haze is still there up to the top left, but that's all we want to do in that image. Now... It's as easy as now clicking develop and develop, you can see. Let me hold that down. You can see the little tick box in the center drop down there. You've got develop, discard, show all those and split. Well, what we've got there is the developed. Well, it's not developed yet. Sorry, my mistake there. Let's have a look at the split image. There's the before, and you can see the quite hazy in the middle there, and there's after. And you can see it particularly in the green rocks, just up the top and the left there. Now, we don't want that there anymore. Oh, we can get rid of it altogether, the split image. But we wanted, what we do want to do, just check the contrast is still 20. Oops, moved it on. Contrast. Oh, 
Okay. Hold that down, long press. Now I can move it up. That's still minus 20, that's still plus 20. Develop. You can see that scrolling bar is quite, it's, um, it's quite delicate. If you go that way, of course, and I don't like working in portrait mode, but I'll go back to landscape mode. If you go in portrait mode, you get the full um, tool bar down the side. So that's all there is to that one. The next one we'll do is making advanced raw adjustments. Now this again is in there. Let's open the image we want, and that's advanced adjustments. That's that one. That's that one there. And there we are. Again, we've got a raw image. Open the file, it's called Advanced Adjustments. Select the Tones panel, which runs the Tones panel. Let's have a look. It's the one that hmm, looks like a picture image there, wavy lines in the middle of it. One, two, three, it's the fourth down, fourth image icon down on the right there, which is that one there. The Tones panel. Check the curves to display a graph. Well, there we are. That comes up like that. That's checked. That's not. It's slightly grey. That's white. So that's curves is checked. Now, that's got the graph there. Check. Click on the lower quarter of the line to add a control node. Now... The lower quarter, that's about, oh, that's about there, isn't it? You can see where the dot is. And then drag that node down to produce a dip in the graph line. This will deepen the image tone, so we'll drag that down. Not much, but you can see that it is dropping the tone. Now, select the Details panel. Which is the one above it. See there? Tones and then Details, Lens and Basic. The Details panel is that one. Check Detail Refinement and drag the Radius slider to 30% and the Amount slider to 60%. This will add a small amount of fine detail sharpening. So, we want detail refinement. Turn that on. Check detail for refinement. Drag the radius, that's the top one. Slider, drag that across to 30%, 29, 30%. And drag the amount slider to 60%. Fifty five seven eight to soups. Now this is following the workbook. You can tell I'm reading the workbook to add a small amount of fine detail sharpening. Now that's a much better image. Let's have a look. Ah, oh, much more, much different. There we go. Now click develop to commit these changes and develop the image. There's develop, and the image is developed. How about that? Now that is really that is really good. If you're trying to adjust images, now you think when you're out photographing landscapes or you're on a model shoot and you've got it perfect in camera and you come home and you think, oh, that's terrible, it's too much light, too little light, it's overexposed. With Affinity Photo on the iPad version 2, you can adjust this even when you're out in the field with the iPad. You don't have to wait till you get back to the studio. Everything is possible. You've got the best of both worlds. Okay, that's all there is to it. Thank you for watching.